minus x over 1 minus the square root of x squared plus 4. What are we going to do on this problem? Yes. We can't substitute. That's the answer. Well, let's let's just start here. Looking at the problem, the way it is, can you, is it against the rules and simplify to make that x plus 2 just to get rid of that? radical on the bottom? Ah, that's a great question. So the question is, Do we factor does a radical distribute over addition? Exactly. This is perhaps one of the most common questions. Radical distribute Mama, mm. let's water me down. Over yeah. addition. Let's water me down. to this question, you have to have it fast, you have to have an explanation, because it's a common question, the answer is no, but 80% of your students will do it. This is my A, A answer, and I give it, probably given it 120 times in my life. I would ask this question, what's the square root of 1 plus 1? Everybody agrees that to the square root of 2. Is that equal to the square, the square root of one, root of one, one, one plus no. the square root of one, no. which is one plus one. No. Since it's not, you've got to say this is not true. Okay? But that is that is a really, really common question. Perhaps the only more common misconception for somebody to come into college with is something closely tied to that. And it would be this question. It would be, does a power, say, squared, distribute over addition? The answer is again, no. This is so common, it's called freshman's dream, interestingly enough. And it goes like this. Here's my argument why it doesn't work. 1 plus 1 squared. Well, gee, you're supposed to be able to split that up. That should be 1 squared plus 1 squared, right? Well, no, it's not, because this, of course, is 2 squared, that's 4, and this is 1 plus 1. So the interesting thing is, neither squaring nor square rooting distributes across addition. The thing that confuses students is it does distribute again across multiplication and division, right? So if you had x times y, and you took the square root, it would be perfectly fair to say that is the square root of x times the square root of y, with, with one small caveat. What has to be true about the sign of these, if you're going to do that? Nothing can be negative. Nothing can be negative. Perfect. Because if they were both negative, uh, you'd be going into a realm that your students probably wouldn't be familiar with. So that's how you simplify radicals. That's why we can do that. Because if that was like the square root of 75, mm -hmm. it would be 25 times. Yeah. So if this was the square root of 75y, you could make this the square root of 75 times y. Okay. So radicals distribute over multiplication to division. Powers. So if I had 75y squared, well, it would be perfectly fair to make that 75 squared times y squared. So it's one of these interesting things where here it works just fine. If you have powers and uh, roots, they distribute very easily over multiplication and division. The reason being because powers are really repeated multiplication. But they do not distribute across addition or subtraction. So that's that's a really good thing um, worth spending the time there. Okay, so. Uh, so no, I may not simplify. You cannot that. simplify the bottom. So what well, should we do? Doesn't really matter because substitution works. So substitution works. We don't need to simplify. Excellent. And that is the trick with these problems. If you got into trying to rationalize, you would run into problems because 
even if you manage to get rid of one of the radicals, what's your goal? Well, if your goal is to make the bottom non-zero, I should say, the denominator, one of these things is we have to try and at least model for our students saying denominator for the bottom instead of bottom for yeah. the bottom. Uh, I guess I don't need to write limit. If I'm doing substitution, I can just write five plus the square root of two minus, minus two. negative two over one minus the square root of negative two squared plus four. So let's see what happens there. I have five plus the square root of four, which is two, one minus square root of eight. the square root of eight. 7 over 1 minus the square root of 8. Now you could reduce the square root of 8 if you wanted to. The way that I typically think about that is I make it a factor tree. I say that's 2 times 4. And I try and get perfect squares in the factorization. So what's the square root of 8? 2 it's times the square root of 2. Square root of 2 times the square root of 4. And then, as you said, it's 2 times the square root of 2, because those are equal. So you could reduce this and write 2 root 2. Another thing that's, that's often done is getting the radical out of the denominator. I always do that. I thought you had to. Some people always do it. Um, some people never do it. If you wanted to do it, how would you go about doing it? Just multiply. Five. Is it one or plus or minus the square root of eight? Is it it's one minus the square root of eight? One minus the square root of eight? Yeah, and then multiply by the same thing on top. Is that going to cancel the cross term? No. No. So it should be a plus. Should be a plus. And then one plus the square root of eight. Multiplying by a clever one here on the top, I get now 7 plus 7 root 8. On the bottom, I get 1. one minus the cross eight. terms cancel, minus 8. So I end up with, let's see, 7 plus 7 root 8 over negative 7, mm -hmm. which reduces to negative 1 minus root 8. Now, sometimes they don't simplify that much. Um, in fact, this is still an irrational number. You could get something that was really ugly with a fraction. Uh, that doesn't change the fact that it's 